break his bill with the, I'm not this kind of girl. I don't usually do stuff like this. <laughs> What's up? It's Nikki. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, King Nikki TV, where I give you commentary on popular movies and TV shows. In this video, I will be recapping episode three of the HBO Max series, The Last of Us. This episode was definitely a complete change of pace, which for some <laughs> might be a sigh of relief. You get to ease up a bit when it comes to this episode as far as the infected and the tension and everything and I guess a little gore that goes with that. This episode actually has Elle and Joel kind of in the background as far as the story. The main focus of this episode's story is the story and character development and pretty much life story well life story once you know we're in the apocalyptic time of the characters of frank and bill we are first introduced to bill when l and joel <laughs> when l and joel are headed over to frank's and bill's because remember last episode before tess sacrifices herself so that they can get away. She tells Joel to take Elle to Tess. Not to, not to Tess. Y'all, these names be tripping me up so bad. I'm not good with names. Tess tells Joel to take Elle to Frank and Bill. So that they can complete the mission. And he, Joel can just get her off of his hands. And that was like the last favor that Tess was asking. She says, I never asked you for anything. Now, we are... At a moment where Joel and Elle are trying to get supplies and we're walking, we're headed over. He goes to like this little, what was it, a convenience store or something where he like stash stuff at. And we're just walking, no wait, this is before the convenience store. We're walking along the road and Joel wants to avoid the road and walk through the woods. And Elle being hard headed is like, well, I got to see whatever it is that you're trying for me to not see. And we see a bunch of bones, a mass grave, so to speak. And they close in on a dress on one of the bones and a blanket. And that is when it morphs into a little backstory right at the hit of the pandemic. Like we've seen at the beginning of episodes one and two, where we kind of go back and we see the dress on this black woman. It's a town of people and the blanket is on her baby. This show is so depressing. Talk about grim when Elle said that. Like, oh my God, like why did it have to be a baby? Like, why did it have to be a baby? This is so depressing. So basically, Joel tells Elle that the military would try to bring people to quarantine zones but if the quarantine zone was full, they would just kill you. And I was kind of annoyed because anytime stuff like this happens when I'm watching movies and et cetera, et cetera, I'm always like, I don't want to be in a city. I mean, I live in a city currently, but <laughs> if something like this goes down, I would rather be living out in a small town or the countryside because I feel like if you're away from mass populated areas, you will have, you know, a slight better chance of survival. So it annoyed me that the military went to like this small town and went to the countryside. Leave them folks alone, like just to come and kill them. That kind of irked me. Like, Joel says the reasoning was dead can't be infected, but it just feels stupid. Why did you even come get us? Like, just leave us be. I don't know. It just... Like, some of the stuff with the military, like, I said episode one, don't trust the military child. Like, in situations like this, they are just going to kill you. But I, I don't know, I kind of look for a little logic. Like, the rules as far as the quarantine zone, you can't, um, like, just come back in. That makes sense because you're risking, you know, bringing the affection in. But not being able to leave the quarantine zone or just killing people, that make any like where is the logic and I guess the logic is supposed to be that the dead can't be infected but that just still doesn't make much sense to me but anyway in the midst of this town we see Bill in his little bunker and child I need a bomb shelter like a little shelter he got like I need one of them better than a safe room but we see him down below and I thought it was interesting because you hear the military guys in his house saying they checked the basement so i'm like okay so wait he built something underneath the basement <laughs> 
but they pretty much cleared the entire town out and we get to see Bill going through the process of kind of just making this whole town his own town for him solely where he survives at getting the power on elect he has electricity he has running water hot water a refrigerator like child he it's the apocalypse but he living good <laughs> And we pretty much get to see him going through this town and everything that he's doing to make it safe, keep the infected out, keep people out. And he has a freaking arsenal, tons of supplies. He pretty much just has everything he needs and he lives pretty self-sufficiently by himself. And we then see he's having dinner and we saw him like some animal skin. Y'all child, I ain't want to see that. <laughs> I'm vegan. I won't see that. But even without that, it was just a disgusting sight. But we end up seeing someone trapped in one of his little holes that you kind of fall in. And we see that it is Frank. And they have a little exchange we saw in a little preview for an upcoming episode where Bill pretty much is kind of uh, a little reluctant, asks if he has a gun, checks him to see if he's infected, and I'm going to presume because he has one of the little machines that you kind of put on people's neck to see if they're infected that the military has. So I'm going to presume that either the military left it behind or Bill left his little town to go scavenge at some point. And he tells uh frank because frank is like i'm headed to boston so he lets him out and he's just like yo boston that way bro <laughs> you're boston that way good luck and that's when frank is like um i haven't eaten in a few days i'm kind of hungry can you send me on the road with some food and <laughs> they have the little exchange that we saw from the preview well bill is just like this ain't arby's like i don't need you telling every bomb you come into contact with that i gave you a free meal so they, you can tell they have like a little chemistry, and, and I mean chemistry as far as like, um, you, you can kind of tell that they're kind of filling each other out as far as if, are, am I in danger, are you safe, can I trust you, quote unquote, like trust, and they go back and forth a little bit with this little banter, that's what I meant, and... Frank pretty much tell Bill, look, I ain't gonna tell no vagabonds, <laughs> I ain't gonna tell no hobos, I ain't gonna tell no bums, I won't tell nobody about this meal. So, pretty much fast forward, and they are in Bill's house, and as Bill is getting the food, Frank kind of just is looking at stuff, and it's like crazy dust, I mean like dust, um... But I can kind of, I kind of feel like if I'm living in this town and it's this world of The Last of Us, I want the town to look run down. I want the town to look like anybody here. Because if anybody come upon me, I want you to not know I'm here and I want you to just move the hell along. Like, I would want the town to look run down. I wouldn't want it to look lived in because I wouldn't want nobody trying to come up in here. I don't know. Maybe that don't make sense. But to me, it makes sense. <laughs> but anyway, fast forward. And they go to play a song on the piano. And a lot of y'all, I guess I'm slow. <laughs> I didn't get it. So Frank plays the song terribly. And that's when Bill jumps in to play the song. And you can tell he's kind of, there's like a sadness when he plays the song. And that's when Frank is like, a uh, uh, who's the girl you're singing about? Or who was the girl? And Bill is just like, there is no girl. And Frank says, I know. Now, when he says there's no girl, I'm thinking that means the girl dead. I mean, we're in the apocalypse. So it, it, there is infected. There is a disease. So that's what I took it as. But uh, I was wrong. And I, I, I guess I just was a little dense. He meant there's no girl because, baby, there's no girl. <laughs> so him and Bill kiss. Frank and Bill kiss. And at this point, that's just me. I'm I'm suspicious of everybody. Everybody's suspect until you prove otherwise. I'm thinking that Frank is kind of, you know, I ain't going to say he was trying to do anything conniving in the sense of trying to, like, kill Bill or take something over. But I'm thinking he using what he got. 
to get what he want. Like, you know, Players Club told you to do. I'm thinking he just trying to get, you know, three hots in the cot. Like, he just wants somewhere to stay. He want I mean, look where they're living. Look at the time. And old boy has pretty much a freaking promised land that he's living at. So I'm thinking old boy is just like, look, I'm going to use my ways and I'm going to have me a little roof over my head and some food because the meals, like, baby was in the cooking. Like, he was cooking. Now, they go upstairs to the bedroom after Bill takes a shower and Frank hits Bill with the, I'm not this kind of girl. I don't usually do stuff like this. <laughs> and they end up fast forwarding and they spend the next what? I can't remember how many times they fast forward and what the years were, but like 17 damn years that they spent here together in a relationship, in love. And even though this was a slow, definitely a slower paced episode, definitely didn't get like the action sequences that we get in, that we got in episodes one and two. And y'all know, I don't know nothing about the video game, but apparently in the video game, there's like an action sequence in the school in this town. There are certain action sequences when it comes to Bill's town that we didn't get in this episode. I sure hope they're going to put it in somewhere because the little school scene and whatever the little infected that they introduced in that scene sounds so cool. I don't know nothing about it. I just know what I heard about it. <laughs> so if you saw, if you played the game, obviously you know. And if you didn't, trust me, it, it sounds really, really cool. Got a piece of dog hair. <laughs> it sounds really cool. But anyway, now... The big kind of conundrum in their relationship is the parallel of Frank and Bill. Frank is pretty much, you know, you can kind of tell whoever you were before the pandemic is kind of maybe a sliver of kind of who, um, I want to say maybe like just the undercut of who you are even in this time. Maybe depending on what you've been through, because Joel is definitely for me. Well, no, no, I feel like Joel is still ultimately the same because it's kind of like how Ted said we're not good people, but that you know they've done bad things, but I feel like they are good people. But anyway, hopefully, y'all get what I'm trying to say because it's kind of like when people say if you stingy with money, you'll be stingy without money, like money doesn't change, it just enhances who you are. That's kind of what I'm trying to say, like whoever. They were pre-apocalypse is pretty much the foundation for who they are post-apocalypse. And you can pretty much see that Bill was already antisocial, a survivalist, and that pretty much plays a big part in who he is in the apocalypse. And Frank is more a people person, still smart, still surviving, but way more, you know, hope in humanity and liking people. Child, Bill don't like people. <laughs> and he ends up, which I, maybe I missed something, but I did not realize that this is the folks that was on the radio with Tess and Joe playing the 70s and 80s music and stuff like that. I did not realize, but this is them. I realized it in this episode. I don't know if maybe I missed something in the previous episodes, but I got it in this episode. And the big conundrum is that Frank pretty much doesn't just want to live to survive. He wants some sibilance of enjoyment in his life. And Bill, on the other hand, is just about survival. For example, Bill just pretty much wants to use their supplies obviously use their resources in a smart way and not to say that frank does it but frank wants to use some resources to like dazzle the place up he wants something nice to look at he wants their home to feel homey and i feel like that is a really good kind of analysis and question when it comes to the people in this world for me i wouldn't want to just survive i would want a purpose and i would want some type of mm, enjoyment in life but i don't know if enjoyment uh, that's kind of a strong word for me in this time because everybody wouldn't be lucky enough to live in this town if you're just living in the world even if you're in a qz zone for me uh i'm use enjoyment a little loosely but i would like to have a purpose i wouldn't want to just simply survive now we end up fast forward and they was playing me y'all they was playing me <laughs> Because I was just feeling like somebody was going to die. I, I just was feeling like somebody was going to die. And I felt like 
you would obviously feel like Bill would be the one to survive because he is seemingly the stronger of the two. And I was like, you know what? I bet you Bill the one that's going to die and Frank the one that's going to be here. And we get a scene where Raiders come after they had dinner with Tess and Joel, which was a great scene. Frank was like, yeah, uh, I was talking to this woman on the radio and yeah, she sound nice and they coming over for dinner and <laughs> he just went on with whatever he was going to do, even though Bill was like, hell no. Nah. But anyway, they get this relationship where they kind of trade and different stuff because they have stuff in the QZ zone that they don't have and Joel is telling Bill about the fence probably won't even last a year and he tells them Raiders are going to come and gives them a little insight into how they can get past, you know, the little stuff that traps up the infected. And we see the Raiders come, but I was confused because baby Bill was out there as a one man army fighting the Raiders while baby Frank was asleep. And I'm like, hold on, baby, if folks is attacking us, can you wake me up? <laughs> like, that was crazy to me, but I was so annoyed. You know, the thing that really gets on my nerve when I watch movies and stuff. If somebody is shooting or fighting and it's folks call their name, that pisses me off so bad. Like, why are you distracting the person and taking their attention off of what they are doing when they are shooting or fighting? Oh my God, that hurts me so bad. That hurts me so bad. And Frank does this. Bill is out there shooting and Frank goes out there and he's like, Bill. And of course, Bill turns around to him and get his ass shot. And I was like, child, you, you got your man shot. You got him shot because he had to turn around and pay attention to you, child. So, I'm sitting here like, dang, man, I was wrong. It's Bill that's going to die. Bill is shot. And he's like, call Joe. Call Joe. You can't be here by yourself. And fast forward, he survived. I don't know how the hell he survived. I'm going to assume that the bullet must have just went through. Cause I feel like if the bullet stuck inside you child and ain't nobody a surgeon or a doctor, like you kind of just dead. But if the bullet goes through you and it ain't stuck inside of you, you probably have a higher chance of survival even if ain't nobody medically trained. So I'm gonna presume child the bullet went through him because how he survived? <laughs> but anyway, fast forward, they pretty much live out their life here and we end up seeing, after they fast forward, that Frank is in a wheelchair. He seemingly has some kind of disease. I don't know if it's cancer. I don't know if it's MS. I don't know, child. He got something and he in a wheelchair. And he pretty much tells um, Bill that he wants to just have a good day. Good final day. They're going to go to a shop. Frank's going to wear, um, Bill is going to wear whatever Frank tells him to. They're going to get married. They're going to have a lovely meal. They're going to drink wine. And they're going, and not they. It ends up being they. But as Frank is telling him, he's going to just lay in bed next to him and fall asleep in his arms. And that'll be the end. Never wake up. And so they end up doing this. And I feel like it's pretty easy to see this coming that Frank is going to just go out with him, which he ends up doing. And by the time I was kind of unclear on the time frame after this, by the time Joel and L gets to the Bill's town, we see flowers are dead, right? And hold on child, how flowers die outside? I was confused on that. Cause I know they could die in your house, but don't flowers live outside? How did flowers die when they was outside? But anyway, maybe I, you know, I ain't got no green thumb. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but how did, how did, how did, how did the flowers die outside? But anyway, the time frame of when they went upstairs and had their final good day, the flowers had time to die outside. The food was still on the table, but there weren't any critters on the food that I would think would be there if food is sitting there for a long time. So I'm not clear on how much time went by. <laughs> but anyway, this dog is biting my fingers and it's distracting me. But anyway, so we get in and there is a note left by Bill. 
And it pretty much is like to whomever comes more than likely Joel. And I feel like this letter is so freaking important. And I feel like this letter is kind of hmm, a catalyst to the relationship that we're about to see with Joel and Elle. And a catalyst to like... Episode one, Joel introduction, we got a certain Joel. Then when they time jumped the 20 years, we were introduced to a certain Joel. Now I feel like we finna get a, another Joel because he is about to be in a situation where he couldn't protect his daughter. He couldn't protect Tess. And obviously, logically, we know that it wasn't that he couldn't protect his daughter or Tess. Those were situations that were out of his control. But he is in a situation where he feels like he couldn't protect the people that meant the most to him. So I feel like this letter kind of sets up that drive and probably insanity that he's going to have in fiercely protecting L. But I felt like, yes, this was a slower episode. Definitely not an episode I prefer. Y'all know me. I prefer the gore and death and mayhem. But I definitely enjoyed this episode. I feel like it was definitely a really good episode. Um, once Joe and Elle get to the house, they stock up on supplies. And I was actually kind of upset. I'm like, in another world, Tess, if Elle would have never came into Tess and Joe's life, Tess and Joel could have found this place where they, you know, are no longer alive. And they could have just lived here. They could have, Bill's town could have became Tess and Joel's town. And they could have lived here happily, just like Frank and Bill did. I was kind of annoyed with that because I'm still just sour and sad that um Tess is gone. I really like that character. And I wish she could have continued. But anyway, just in another Another universe, I was just thinking of Bill's Town becoming Tess and Joel's Town. But anyway, um, Joel tells Elle he has a brother that he's finna go look for who is with the Fireflies and can likely tell them how to get Elle to the Fireflies doctor or whatever. So they hop in the car and, you know, he has a car, battery, supplies from everything that Bill has stocked up there. And... He pretty much, Joel pretty much tells L, look, the rules are you do what I say, you do what I say, and you do what I say. <laughs> but something that is going to come into play is he keeps not letting L have a gun. She's like, it's a whole wall and I can't get one. But as she's left alone in the house, she discovers a gun and she tucks it into her little knapsack, <laughs> into her book bag. So we're going to see what happens with that. I hope it ain't going to be a situation where something stupid happens and it's like, look girl, this is why I told you not to have a gun. Hopefully it's a situation where it comes in handy and she actually helps him and uses her smart mouth to be like, see, this is why you should have let me have a gun. But we definitely have some good episodes coming up. I just feel it because it's already been so good and I'm so excited and I can't wait let me know in the comments what did you think about this episode. Did you prefer this slower paced episode or do you prefer the action and chaos and death? and may I mean, we got death, but y'all know what I mean. <laughs> I definitely prefer the mayhem and chaos, but this was a really good episode. So far, The Last of Us has not missed. They aren't. They, they aren't. They haven't. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I'll see you in the next one.